The French Reformation has some mighty champions for the cause, but perhaps more than any other country, they suffered persecution and bloody setbacks that eventually hindered the work. One of the key early leaders was Jacques Lefebvre, a professor at the University of Paris, one of the most prestigious universities here in Europe. In 1510, he was doing some research and reading the Bible for a book that he was going to write. And in it, he discovered that the righteousness of Christ offers not just complete forgiveness, but also transformation of heart. This was a completely different perspective from what he had learned. And with this new idea, he started to share it with his students. One of Lefebvre's most ardent students at the time was William Farrell. Farrell's parents were members of the French gentry and they wanted their son to be a knight, but he was not interested. He convinced his father to send him here to the University of Paris. Whilst a student, he was zealous, idealistic, and eager to defend the teachings of the church. His ideological framework was shattered and replaced with a seemingly impossible worldview as he sat in Professor Lefebvre's classes. He was not the only one who was convinced by these new teachings. Others who embraced Lefebvre's teaching would be William Briconnet of May, who would go on to establish the first Protestant congregation in Europe in May. John Calvin would become the most prominent leader in the French Reformation. Calvin came here to Paris to study theology at the University of Paris and whilst he was here, he spent some time with his cousin Pierre Olivetan, a former student of Jacques Lefebvre. He worked hard to convince him on the validity of the new ideas that were spreading across Europe, but Calvin would have none of it, leading to frequent arguments between the two of them. Eventually, a series of events would lead to his conversion. Olivetan's arguments Calvin's own study of the Bible, and also an encounter he had with a reformist martyr on the streets of Paris, here at La Place de la Grève, the official burning spot for martyrs in Paris. He was touched by the peace, the calmness, and the serenity that was on his face as he was being burned to death. Calvin faithfully preached throughout the city of Paris and also the province of Berry, and he found an ally to the cause of reform in the king's sister, Margaret. She was determined to help the cause that she so passionately believed in, and she solicited the services of her friend, the preacher, Gerard Roussel, and opened up the palace of the Louvre to the public. Thousands flocked here to the palace to hear him preach the truths of righteousness by faith directly from the Bible. The Parisian church authorities tried to shut them down. However, the king was loyal to his sister and protected her, even though he was not fully convinced of her views. Sadly, the French Reformation would experience a horrific setback. Some of the more radical proponents of reform thought that the pace was too sluggish, despite Princess Margaret's bold moves. Some of them got together and they decided to take drastic action. They wrote an article that denounced transubstantiation, printed it and distributed it throughout the kingdom and plastered posters on every church door. Someone fatefully even put a poster on the door of the king's bedchamber. It was a foolish move and the backlash was devastating. The king had previously been on the fence in regards to the Reformation, but not anymore. Thousands of French Protestants were rounded up and burned at the stake in a gruesome bloodbath. Thousands more fled Paris and the kingdom lost some of their greatest minds to persecution and exile. The Reformation was not completely destroyed though. The Huguenots would carry the torch of truth unflinchingly for several centuries. After the affair of the placards, Calvin helped William Farrell establish Protestantism in Geneva, which became a city of refuge for persecuted Protestants throughout Europe. John Calvin helped to establish the University of Geneva as a training school for young ministers. Many of those who were trained came across the border here into France and worked as covert church planters. The Reformation in France suffered a major setback, but as John Huss said, great is the truth 
and it prevails. And this axiom was proved true both in Geneva and also in France through the agency of faithful men and women who refused to recant. May we have that same steadfastness and courage and stand by our convictions no matter what the obstacles may be.